Welcome to Shelf or Sell, the video series where, historically, we have put 10 games on, oh, we have put 10 games on the chopping block, and we have put 5 on our shelf, and 5 that we have decided to get rid of. We are going to be continuing this series, but we're going to change it up a little bit, because the point of this is to break down and, and share with you our collection. What's coming, what's going, what is staying forever. And we have gotten to the point where a lot more games are coming in and we aren't getting enough of them played to actually hey, put hey, five on the I've chopping block. I played 60 new games last month. I hear, but none of them are the ones that are in the basement that are in the backlog. So we're going to keep going with the Shelf or Sell series, but the format from this point on is going to shift a little bit. Yeah. We're usually going to have something that we're keeping, something that we're getting rid of. We're going to have a conversation around the games we've played, and every time a game leaves our house, we'll let you know. But along with that, I figured to update you, the community, to keep you involved in what we're doing, we're also going to talk about what we're backing and what prototypes and stuff that have gotten sent to us. Not or just prototypes, core games. Yeah, basically uh, anything and not that's just, entering. not just sent to us, also purchased. There's a influx of titles that are here. So yeah. prototypes arrive every single week, it seems, and it's fun to let you know what we have coming down the pipeline that we're going to be covering. Yeah. Core games come and go. We purchase games or pre-order games oh, that yeah. show up six months after they're supposed to. And I think at least once a month, maybe every other week, we're going to update you on what we're currently backing on Kickstarter and GameFound. Now, that doesn't mean it's all the good games out there, and there's a good chance we've missed things along the way. Sure. And the good news on this is you'll be able to, able to let us know in the comments down below what we should be backing and uh, keep us posted. All right, let's start by breaking down what's staying, what's going. Okay. Uh, first off, added to our permanent collection as of, well, three months ago, but we're updating you now. Onk, Onk at the moment is staying. Yes. No. I it is in a genre that I really like, area it is. control. Yep. While it is not my favorite in that genre, I do enjoy it. And I need a lot more times to play it before I make a completely final decision. But for now, it is definitely staying. I like the variable powers and abilities. I liked what the board was doing. Yeah. I like the action track. I like the point scoring. The merge mechanic is something that I'm still questioning on. But you don't have to play with it. You don't have to. So, the big question for me is how often do you and I get this to the table over some other titles that I know you're trying okay. to get, like Inish. Yes. Uh, like we're gonna be we're gonna be playing. Just uh, because it's on our permanent collection doesn't mean we're getting it to the table yeah. every very frequently. We have some of we'll yours see. that don't get to the table. Some I, d I don't. I don't think so. Now, if you're wondering why we have an unopened copy, it's because we actually got two copies in. I'd ordered two when we uh, first had the uh, Kickstarter happen, and that first open copy uh, remained with Jan when he moved into the D.C. area. So we have ours that needs to be broken open, but until we're ready to play it, we probably won't punch it. A game that is going is going to be, ooh, pieces, Atlantis Rising. Yeah. We got a chance to table this um, a couple times this past week. And it was fun. It's a fun experience. It's a cooperative yeah. escalation game. A worker placement with the island slowly sinking. Yeah, but there are a lot more f cooperative games that I want to get up to the table. I want to get Cthulhu, Death May Die. I, I, I'm i blanking on them, but there's a lot more that <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> She's really one lane right now. She wants to get Cthulhu, so many, Cthulhu, specifically Death Cthulhu, Death, Death May Die. Yeah, also, Madara, Kingdom possibly Death Monster, Cthulhu, Death Gloom May Die. Haven. There's Have a lot you thought... Of Cthulhu Death May Die? I was going to mention that. Oh, yeah, I have. No, I mean, there's, there's Spirit Island that we want to yeah. play. There's, uh, I'm also now immediately blanking <laughs> on we, game names. As, as you're well. trying to think of a list of games, your, your mind brain just goes, goes blank. <laughs> it's like you cannot think of any other games that belong into the genre you're thinking. We own lots of cooperative games. Yahtzee? <laughs> That's Tic Tac Toe? <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping Gods is another one I yeah. want to dive into. There's a lot. So. I, I thought this was in, uh, insane production quality. Yes. Oh Fun. my gosh. That is Elf Creek's like top thing I can say about them. Their production quality of their components is yeah. fantastic. Fun. Uh fun abilities, good cooperative, good worker placement escalation, yeah. but good just doesn't stay. Like, yeah. good doesn't stick around, right? So it was really great to be able to play this. We might do some content on it or dedicated stuff. We might yeah. even do a gameplay video. I'm, I'm still deciding. But at the end of the day, it's just not one that beyond this cycle, beyond like five, six plays, is going to remain in the collection. Setting it somewhere over there, apparently. We're just going that way. We're just I was going to put it here, but no, we're not going to do that. This Homesteaders, is Homesteaders from TMG Games. This is the 10th anniversary Plus edition. the expansion. Now, I've had this for a while. If you're a fan of the channel, you would have seen us do coverage on this version of the game way back in the day when uh, TMG, uh, Tasty Minstrels Games, was still a thing. 
And this is just this is a game you haven't got a plan, chance to play with yes. me yet. But Tasty Minstrels games is Tasty Minstrel games is fascinating and really depressing to me because I, I don't know what financial stuff happened mm-hmm. that made them not be able to like maintain, but they put out some of the best interesting Euros in this space. And Homesteaders is going to be one of those, with a bidding track where you're trying your best to uh, get access to tiles first, and a tableau where you're building out this railroad with different villages and homes and producers on it. Uh, I really, really loved Homesteaders. It's been about a year since I've played it, but it's one that we should prioritize soon, awesome. uh, just because I think you're going to fall in love with it as well. We just played, I mean, it's. I'm putting it in the same line of like games I love from my past, yeah. with like, uh, with, with like uh, uh, Russian railroads, Yes. and you were like... Oh, that's great. That's yeah, that, that was a great one. We should have actually put it on this list this week. Yeah, we could have. We could have possibly. Right. Dungeonology, the expedition. I, I backed Dungeonology despite my better instincts way back in the day. And I know it's been a while since it's arrived. I, I'm not going to say it's a bad game. It is cute. It is adorable. It's all about, it, it's, it's this uh, sort of dungeon crawl, weird little tableau game mixed in with kids at school. Like, okay. it's got this idea that you're, you're sort of like Harry Potter, right? Mm-hmm. Going to class, getting research, doing quests. And it's fine. It's it's just not one... That, it's not a big box minis game that's ever going to be all yeah. of the others. Yeah. Um, and so I would like to try to get this back to the table. It's been a very, very long time since I've uh, done anything with it. But it, it just wasn't... It wasn't good enough for me to want to keep it... Despite the fact that I, I, I've acted and I still, like, there's that part of me. You know that part of you that's like, I want to really like this game. I want to. Uh, townsfolk Tussle. Do we need to say more? I mean, we do. Why? I don't know. Why? They know our opinion. We have said this our opinion so many times about this game. This game is staying in our collection forever and ever 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 and ever. It's it's the Kingdom Death. It's the fun helter skelter style of Kingdom Death. It's a laugh out loud romp with, I'll admit, less tactical decision makings, and you know that's perfectly fine. It doesn't have a settlement phase, but the character, the life, the story here, the the fun like roll dice, gain weapons, yeah. upgrade your system, go do things that are counter in, you know, intellectual to just make your mission happen. It's fun. It's thematic. It's the boss fights, the little ones as you ramp up to the whoever you're fighting. It's just so much fun. I love yeah. the little gear cards that you find. I like the mechanics involved. And so yeah, this one's staying, but I yeah. realize it hadn't been on our collection. So it hasn't also uh, been on the channel since yeah. we did an unboxing of it. We need to get a gameplay of it filmed at some point soon, which is a good example or a good opportunity for us to just hang out. Uh, I know this is an expansion box. This is going to be Champions of Midgard. Uh, Euro worker placement with like dice combat, a bit of luck mixed in there, which is a weird hybrid for a Euro, yeah. right? You, you mix in uh, kind of dice rolling along with uh, more perfect information strategy. Champions of Madara. I played it. Champions of Midgard. Champions of Midgard. I played it a while ago. Uh, I, again, it's just one of those games that just hasn't settled well with me. Um, okay. I want to like it. I think the artwork's super cool. I like the Viking theme. I like the idea of messing with kind of Euro game systems. But this just isn't it. And I have the expansion box here because I was hoping that, that mixing in some of the expansions would give more custom abilities, more uh, kind of interesting board play. There's even another expansion that kind of opens up the tableau a little bit. And none of it, none of it has really stuck with me. This is one that Jan and I uh, were really excited back in the day, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, never, never quite hit the stride. So, Champions of uh, Midgard is not going to be staying. Uh, let's start walking through stuff that has arrived and stuff that we have backed. Like okay. this is the next segment. That's just not going to slide next over very Next segment well. of the series. Things we're doing. Be careful. It's so violent. Uh, we have three prototypes that I'm excited to say have arrived this week that we're going to be doing coverage on, uh, starting with Malai, Mal, Malaya. Malnia? I've never read it out loud. <laughs> Malhaya. Is that an N or an H? That's a M-A-L-H-Y-A. Malia. Malia. Lands of Legends. Now, why am I excited about this game that I've realized just now I've never actually pronounced aloud? It's so funny. It becomes so easy to pronounce games... Mentally, while you're looking at it on an email yes. or yes. when they arrive. And then you get them in and you go, Sprite Iceland? And you're like, no, that's not it. Sparit Island. And you're like, ah, getting closer. Get it. Spirit Island. Figured it out. That's Good. the... 
Uh, okay, what is this game? This is a Gloomhaven-style, Gloomhaven-esque game with dungeon crawling, power and abilities, etc., etc. The thing that's cool, the thing that has me excited about this, or at least compelled by this, Besides the is artwork, that is so really cool. The artwork, the artwork's, artwork's awesome. Uh, they're trying to do, uh, they're trying to do a thing in this game that, that makes setup and breakdown a little bit quicker, a little bit faster than the big box Gloomhaven, uh, which is interesting to me. And they're also working with some interesting sort of dungeon crawl mechanics. Uh, okay. This is, this is up my genre. It might be another one of those big box games that, I love and don't play enough. Yes. Uh, but there are humans out there that actually get them to the table, which I am excited to share this with, if that's the case. Those humans aren't usually you. Uh, those humans Oof. are not usually me. I'm not used to dealing with prototypes. Yeah, please be careful with prototypes. Camera. You're, like, shaking it yeah, all noticed, over. Yeah, I noticed, especially something as valuable as that. You want to grab something from your side? No, no, no. We'll do all the prototypes yeah. real quick. Well, this. We have... Lobotomy 2 Manhunt. This looks super interesting because I know what a lobotomy is. Do you know oh. what a lobotomy is? Yes, it's what they did to me back in 1935. They did not do it to you. They stick a rod up your nose, circle it around a little bit, kill that front part of your brain, and make sure you're always happy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lobotomy 2 Manhunt. This is going to be a dungeon crawl uh, campaign game in an asylum. So cool. Yeah, it's a this is a horror fantasy game. So you're you're in this nightmare oh. asylum. You're learning how to use your powers. You're actually learning that like the mental disorders you have are powers and abilities that you get to utilize throughout the course of the game. I'm curious to see how they work with kind of mental illness. Yes. Uh, but if they make it fun, if they make it interesting, even if they make it dark and horrifying, Twisted? yeah. I'm perfectly okay with that. So, uh Lobotomy Manhunt, we need to get this open. It's launching from Titan Forge in so soon. It reminds me so of how um, Cthulhu Death May Die deals with disorders, and they yeah. have snuck in like random like mental illnesses yeah. there. Yeah, so. so this is this is cool. It's it is a like I said, you're you're the patients in the asylum, and you're getting weird visions and cryptic messages, and you're also cooperatively trying to figure out like is your brain right or is it lying to you? Are you being deceived? It sounds really cool. Yeah, it's neat. All this right. is gonna be a weird one to kind of tip up. So just kind of oh, yeah. scroll it over here. Let's not. Let's not shuffle it too much. The Bad Karmas and the Curse of, of the, the Zodiac. This is the demo kit for a system called the Teberu system, which is the first real, like legitimate adaptation of a video game board game hybrid. In here is going to be the Bad Karmas. It's a cooperative uh, dungeon delve style game. I seem to like those, but. Yeah. There's also this game board, this map it opens up that has sensor pads on it that pair with your iPad and your phone. Hmm. So you're moving smart miniatures across this board. Those miniatures are telling information back to the story and the story's doing things like scripting what happens next, drawing eye cards from the monsters, but also you move on to a zone and you suddenly see a volcano erupt in the side of your, your, cool. your iPad. You move off a zone and a news article pops up saying that something just happened. Yeah. In this like experiential dungeon dive, you're affecting the story, and the story remembers where you've been, what you've done, how you've interacted with the board in a really interesting way. The Bad Karmas is the core system. The Teberu is going to be the base underlying technology behind it. And the Teberu system, which is the touchpad and the iPad and the integration, is something that's going to be carried on to a lot of other games in the future. We're going to see Euros working with it. We're going to see Dungeon Dive, Skirmish Games, where oh, you actually see a modified system. So imagine, imagine yeah. for instance, uh, uh, what's, the, what's the Mythic Games, big Skirmish game that you love so much? Super Fantasy Brawl. Yes. Imagine that, but every time you do an attack or move next to a creature, you see your two animated creatures actually wield and deal. You play a card that, that like has a little icon that gets placed down and, and the computer immediately scans the microchip in it and you nice. suddenly see like a rocket fire off one of your you know enemies and three damage hit into the side of it. So interesting. It's just integrating technology into the You're board game space. This one. I'm really excited about it. I am very, very excited about it. All right, I'll set this here and then I will slide these over here so you have things to mess with. Let's talk <laughs> about things that have arrived this week. Now, some things we, I mean, we have, we have a board game channel. We get sent some things from publishers. We also back some things. We also uh, have things that we ordered six months ago. Mm -hmm. We also do work and sometimes publishers send us stuff. We're not going to spend the time like digging into like every single thing that came in and exactly why it's here and, and whatnot. We'll tell you if we're planning to do coverage and stuff, but most of this stuff we're excited about. We're planning to do coverage, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is coming from Inside Up. We have the Quick and the Undead. We have uh, Seven, seven souls. souls, 
And do we have anything else around here? Mm. So these are going to be the two kind of big box games. We, right now, already have Summit, and we have City Builder. Yes. City Builder we just played. Yeah, and it was a delight. It was really good. Uh, the thing, the reason why I have these next two games is going to be because of Earth. I really, really like Earth. I really do. Uh, it's on Kickstarter right now. It's yeah. doing insanely well. Yeah. 200,000 backers and still growing. A lot of time left. It was number three on trending on BGG. I'm so thrilled for them. Yeah. It wasn't quite your speed. I liked it, and I want to dive into it more, but... Here's the thing that might make you excited. Yes. All the stuff you had criticism of, all the stuff that you were like, this doesn't quite work for me. Yeah. Sent that email to the publisher. Yeah. We've been working back and forth with them. There's a chance that the next cycle of this game... We actually get to do some development work cool. to make it a little bit closer to where you want it to be cool. for an expansion or a module or something like that. Yeah. And yes, it will be duck based. Uh, outside There's of that, There's already ducks in it. I wanted to do a wrap up or a, a kind of showcase of Inside Up Games. Uh, we're only missing a few of their titles. Yeah. So we went ahead and reached out, picked up a few of their titles. Uh, we're going to be getting these to the table and we're just going to show off the uh, entire package to the audience. So I will slide that over. This is something I was so happy when I saw it come to our door. This is Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria, and we actually did an unboxing of Valeria Card Kingdoms earlier this week. I don't know if it's gone up yet, Yeah. but this is Valeria Card Kingdoms is a sentimental, not just sentimental though, it is one of the intro games that I got brought into yeah. the hobby on. The artwork, the dice rolling, the resource management, the deck, not deck building, but deck building slash tableau building because it's kind of like a deck because you're purchasing from a market, mm -hmm. but then you're also putting it in front of you because you're activating it with whatever dice you roll or the other people roll. It was amazing, and I really, really liked it. And then I realized that Valeria um, has so many other games inside their universe. And so I have played Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. While it is not my favorite of the universe, it still belongs in that universe, and the universe should belong in our house. Yeah, I went ahead and picked this up quickly because the publisher has almost no copies left. Yeah. yeah. I had to pick it from like a third party. There's another one, seller. Margraves of Valeria. Margraves of Valeria. Margraves of Valeria. Interesting. I, I like this system a lot. I was really excited about uh, Kingdoms of Valeria. Yeah. And so Valeria Card Kingdoms. Valeria Card Kingdoms. And so diving in enough. diving into another module is uh, super exciting for me. Yeah. I, I Now will it be right for us? We're not sure. It wasn't quite right for Alex. No. He wasn't Shadow Kingdoms was not one. um as he's kept Valeria Card Kingdoms yeah. for a long, long time. Um Shadow Kingdoms was probably our least favorite out of the three. I know they have another one coming out mm. um as well, something new that we're gonna see soon. But this one was our least favorite of the three. Margraves was a little bit better. Um, it stuck around for a little while. I know, I think he's getting rid of it, yeah. um, but I would like it. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, sometimes you and I playing games together changes the opinion that we have yes. versus, like, a shared different game group. So yeah. I want to give this a swing. I want to give all the Valeria Card Kingdoms games a, uh, a try because they're absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And I like, if I like a core system enough... I want to play all the like little twists. Well, what's off. interesting is that it's not the core. It's not the, the same thing. It's not the core, si same core I'm system. Saying, it's I'm the saying, core if universe. I like, yeah. If I like a universe, and, and I like, artwork. like for instance, Garfield Games with okay. their like Architects of the West Kingdom. Yes, like, yes. I now just, not all of them are good. But we have to try them all, basically. Yeah, wanna, it's, it's the same thing for Lacerdas. It's the same thing for Stefan Field yeah. Games. It's a lot yeah. of these. I'm so excited about this next game coming in. I'm so thrilled. Shira, should I, should I just let you... It's so exciting that this has finally come to our doorstop. Yay. She, she did not like this game at all. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, Dodo's Riding Dinos from Draco Studios. Why did you not like this game, Shira? Because it is a dexterity racing game. Because I you're don't like terrible dexterity. at dexterity and you become very grumpy about it. Yes. Dodo's Riding Dinos is going to go on a list of like top 10 dexterity games I have played. This is a helter-skelter racing game with dexterity items that knock people off the track, shift them in position... It's so much fun. It's just not fun to play with her. So I'm so it's happy going, you like it's it. It's going in my corner of the world. I'm so happy you like it. You can keep it with Catacombs, and you can keep it with Flick of Faith, and you can keep it with any other dexterity games that you like. This is a good example of a, a game that we did some coverage of, and now that they have production copies coming out, they uh, sent one our yeah. way, for instance. So... Enjoy it. I love the, the minis. Side. The minis were adorable, and like I would love to play with the minis. We have Legendary. I don't know much about this game. I know it's a card game based in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yep. I know you're excited about that, or the com Marvel Comic Universe, I Marvel. suppose. Uh, coming from Upper Deck, what I know is that Upper Deck has been kind enough, because they've been doing their Ultimate Gamer stuff over the last mm -hmm. year, they've been kind enough to send us like three expansions. And finally I sent them a message being like, thank you so much for the expansions. <laughs> we don't have the core game. I don't, I don't, 
I don't know how to use these. <laughs> so we are excited to be diving into this finally. They, they were kind enough to go ahead and send us a big box of it. And yeah, it's it's more Marvel stuff. I know. I'm it's excited a- because I did not like Marvel Champions. Ooh. I like Marvel United. I did not like Marvel Champions. Um, you can see that in a video, the 12 games that we disagree on. But this is another Marvel card game. Yeah. And I have hope that maybe I'll like it because I really love the Marvel Universe. You do. Uh, yeah, great. So we have, we have Legendary in. Let us know what you think of this one, if you, uh, if you have a copy of it or not. Oh, Lizard, Wizard. We just did an unboxing of this. Yep. Uh, excited to have this copy in, although I have to admit. What? Slightly disappointed. This is just the retail copy, not the deluxe copy. And after seeing Alex's first... Oh, I got so spoiled playing on Alex's deluxe yeah, copy I, with I was the maps looking and up, the upgraded resources and the upgraded coins. It was beautiful. I literally went to Forbidden Games web store last night yeah. to check. It is $60 to upgrade the coins, the components, the like all the yeah. Kickstarter stuff. And you still don't get the first player meeple, the big old marker, which isn't necessary. But he was so cute. He's very cute. Uh, Lizard Wizard, really fun economic resource management game. Uh, very interesting, very compelling. We're definitely going to be getting it to the table quite a few times. I have to admit, though, having played and experienced the Deluxified yeah. version versus the retail version, I don't know that this version stays in the collection. Yeah. If we love it enough, there's no way we don't upgrade it. Uh, but it, it does it does paint a, a hard question. Uh, yeah. Would I recommend people to get the retail version if they're interested in the game? Sure. You don't know what you're missing out on. It's just the Deluxified was very, very nice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. And I have one more game that actually arrived a little while ago. I haven't had a chance to showcase or unbox it. I think you're excited about this one. Uh, we it's have... hard to tell. Yeah. Right? From, from this point of view, not seeing it at all, it is very hard to tell what game it is. Oh, boom. <gasps> Obsession! We have Yay! all of... We have all of Obsession finally in. That's going to be oh, I'm Obsession. I'm so excited for this. You have the expansion. With the Good. Obsession expansion. Oh, this is a delight. With the useful Yay. box. Yay. Uh, of course, with a Wessex expansion. Of course. You got to follow up with the uh, promotional tiles. And that, that's, that's it, other than, it, other than bubble it. wrap. Uh, so oh. I reached out to the publisher after posting my Grail Games list, like the 10 games yeah. I wanted to add to my collection permanently, and uh, to check to see if they had stock available. And they did, so we went ahead and got a full copy of this. We will be doing coverage of Obsession. It's a game that both of us really, really, really adore. Uh, it is lovely. It is bland. It is Europe. Bland? Well, look at it. Oh, bland looking, but it is not bland playing. You are building, no. uh, be, like your deck building, tableau You're management. Building a house. Yeah, and you have your little workers. You have the guests that have to be accompanied yeah. by family members, and it's so cute, all in the like Westminster Abbey, yep. old Bridgerton type style. style. Of stuff. Yeah, it's it's really lovely. Uh, very excited. Very excited to have this. This I is have not, no room on my side. We'll just you slide can't, it, you can't slide it over there. Stuff on my this side is anymore. not leaving the collection at all, period. Okay, the last thing we need to do is we, we said we were going to give you an update on uh, what we've backed. Don't look. Don't look. What we've backed, what we're, uh, what we're currently supporting on Kickstarter. Hopefully people can see that okay. Uh, so, right now, stuff we've backed. Now, for the record, when it comes to Kickstarter stuff that we've backed... Uh, I back at different levels based on different things. Sometimes publishers, again, are going to be sending us or comping us a full pledge. So we'll back at a dollar, making sure we get a copy. Uh, sometimes we're backing just full, mm-hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, keep that in mind. Mind MGMT Secret Missions. We don't need the full core game again. We have the full core game. Although I would like more full core games, <laughs> just, just as but, backups. Uh, but we are getting the deck of cards. We're getting the secret missions. Yeah. We might end up getting two copies of them. We do have two copies of the game. This is a absolutely lovely so uh, great. head-to-head two-player. Down to eight hours left to go, so people that are watching this are maybe out of luck, but you could probably late back. Uh, I I'm saw backing this. Ostia. Do I know why I'm backing Ostia? No. I'm not entirely sure. Something keeps compelling me about this game. Uh, $170,000 raised, 1,200 yeah. backers. I, I don't know. I just really... Uh, I thought it looked intriguing. I was scrolling through Kickstarter recently, and I was like, oh, I wonder if he backed it. So I'm glad you did. It yeah, says- I, I've heard it compelled to, or I've heard it compared to a few different Euro-style games that I like. Um, mm-hmm. I can't quite think of them immediately, um, but I don't know much about this game. I'm going to I'm gonna be honest about that. I do not know much about this game, but I sometimes back things just because they look absolutely beautiful, and I am compelled as oh, to what it Oh, it's as big as Age be. of Steam. I was seeing that. 
and I'm compelled Dang. as to what they they might end up being. So this cool. is one that I just I really want to try out. Very very interested. Uh, crossing this off, Wreckland Run. This is a solo game. Yeah. I have a prototype of it. Uh, working on doing some coverage of it. It is fun. It is helter skelter. Uh, Alex taught me how to play it. I, I really like this one. This is one that you were just recently asking yeah. about, whether or not we were backing. Um, so, yeah. It looks cool. Oh, and for the record, for those of you, you know, checking backing and stuff like that, this is also our career. So, everything we back ends up getting on the channel, ends up being uh, content for us. Uh, Reckland Run. It's going to be a solo game where you're driving these cars and you're going to be facing off against these different mobs that kind of have uh, adjacency based off your car. It's built off a core system that comes from a, a previous game uh, and the idea from uh, Warp's Edge. And the idea is you're going to be uh, rolling dice and placing dice in different areas to deal certain types of abilities, effects, damage. Cool. And every time you use a die, you're also limiting or uh, instructing the AI of the opponent as to what they're going to do. Um... So, we are currently backing this little game. What else do we have here? Uh, you want to talk about Rolling this game? Because you just made sure that oh, we were backing Oh, this. yes. I saw this coming up, and I was like, this is such a fun game by AEG. Instead of a uh, typical dice. Boom. 9 out of 10 by me. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of rolling dice, you are rolling meeples. And you're trying to get your meeples to be standing full straight up um, or crooked, but they just can't be lying down. Otherwise, they're going to go on strike. And then you are getting these different buildings and building them with resources and trying to grow out this mm. magnificent magnificent city with different end games, point scoring objectives, and some private point scoring objectives that you're going for. The goal is to get the most points. And I liked it. As someone who did not like Quacks of Quallenberg and liked Cubitos, this out of like those three that I'm comparing them to is my favorite. Mm. Uh, yeah, super excited about Rolling Heights. I think it beats both of them for us. We actually sold Quacks and we don't own Cubitos yeah. solely because we know Rolling Heights it's is uh, on the way. That was kind of the compromise that we decided to make with each other. So, moving down, I backed this little game. What? I backed... Did you? I backed Hand to Hand Wombat. It's from the creators of Rolling ki of, of Exploding Kittens. Why are you, why are you hand, hand in face? Why are you because hand it looks ridiculous. Do you know what it is? No, okay. but it looks okay. ridiculous. Okay. Does okay. it have squishy tacos? No. Okay. But it is from that company. It is from that company. Here's the concept. I like the squishy tacos. Here's the concept. Tell me how fun this sounds. Okay. Tell me how fun this sounds. You have various different pyramid-shaped towers and items that are fun to hold on to that you're trying to build. You're sitting around a table. About five people sitting around the table. You see those, those yes. items? Yes. Five people sitting around the table. The object of the game is to build a tower up to the top. Okay. Everyone closes their That's eyes. It's a baby toy. No, listen. <laughs> yes. Yes. Also good to have. <laughs> that little baby toy. Also, also good to have. <laughs> yes. Everyone's sitting around the table. Everyone closes their eyes and everyone starts working on that tower. You're working together. You're cooperatively working together. Shira, Shira, Shira. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Stay with me. <laughs> it sounds like a bad no, dexterity no, 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 no. Here's the twist. Okay. Here's the twist. One person's betraying you all. One person is taking things off the tile, moving things onto the tile, and your job is not only to successfully build the tiles, but also figure out who keeps screwing with it. I'm so excited. I'm so glad that this is a solo game that you will thoroughly it's enjoy. Not, it's not a solo game at all. <laughs> I think this sounds like an absolute riot. Uh, it even has a golden wombat, uh, a golden wombat pouch carrying case, and... Uh, there's a keychain of unknown size. Every time they back, the keychain just keeps getting larger and larger. So there's a chance we're getting you a massive keychain and a beautiful carrying pouch. Oh, those I will definitely be keeping. I just think that is ridiculous. It is, it is, I think it is going to be a blast. And this company has a history of knowing how to put out games that are a blast. Yeah, they... Oh, we could get a butt face. <laughs> oh, a, a wombat skull. Another, Another butt, butt face. face. Wow, an, an ugly, ugly mug. mug. Oh, that is ugly. So this is their one dollar, like... This company is just a curated display of dinosaur poop. Ooh, That's I do nice. Like that. Oh, engraved deer jawbone. Engraved with Chad. Phallic fruit. Oh, nice. An oddity. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's weird. A phone that looks like a cat. I love it. A butt rug. Not a butt vase, but it is a butt rug. A lot of bubble gum. A jar of snakeskin. So all of these one dollar pledges. Yeah. I think you get that, and you get the full game. Uh, yeah, I just. Ridiculous. I just, I love this company. I absolutely adore this company. I'm very, very excited about being uh, a supporter. Tabletop Find a Book. Tabletop Find a Book is such an adorable 
twist on the typical find it book that has those pictures that were so cool that you had to find the different objects that they were saying on the story on the very bottom. Ooh, they're getting harder. So we did a showcase of it on the channel and that was my one feedback that they didn't seem hard enough. And so these look really cool. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, I, I mean, this is all of Dice Thrones which I think is pretty yeah. epic, just the entire mini spread out there. Yep. Uh, I think it looks really cool. There's our video there at the top, mm -hmm. I Spy Board Game Edition. Uh, my thought and my advice to him, which I think he's actually going to be doing, was to add a section to the end of the book with all the games on each page listed. Mm. And then you have to go, like the advanced mode yeah. for players is to go through and like find the corresponding games in each one of the different nodules. It was it was gorgeous, and the pictures, he's taking the pictures actually with a camera, which yeah. was really cool to find out, because that is hard work. Uh, Kingdoms Forewarned. Kingdoms Forewarned. some content on that game from so much. this I'm, week. I'm actually working and hopefully putting out another piece of content. I'm, I'm oh, talking yeah? with the creators right now to try to do a accurate solo mode uh, fight. Cool. Uh, that's the thing, and we have to give away a copy of this. Um, but look at, I mean, look at this amazing artwork. Fantastic, uh, like all this crazy stuff they've unlocked. Um, this just, game. I'm looking forward to seeing what the final copy yeah. comes as because there was a lot of hope and promise that it can deliver, and I'm curious to see how it fulfills. The miniatures look lovely, the artwork looks lovely, and that was never my criticism. My criticism was the mechanics involved. Yeah. And games can't just be artwork. And I think they're going to be able to refine them. I really do. I have a lot of faith and hope in the company. They yeah. do They do put the time necessary into playtesting and prototyping and developing. I just think the prototype and the, and the way it came and in. And they deliver, uh, unlike some other companies. Yeah, I, so I have I have a ton of faith and I have a ton of hope. That's why we're backing this. That's yeah. why we're supporters of the campaign. Um, criticism yeah. was not for the sake of being critical. Criticism was to give you all as much of an information as possible. And they just were receptive like we to the criticism, oh, which yeah. is really nice to hear. No, they're super, super receptive. Earth. Earth. Oh, you love this and we talked about it. I miss this game. Yes, I want to play this game more. You talked about it, like, we already talked about it earlier on this video, but yeah, it was a lovely game. Yeah. Um, I just want it to not be as open-ended. I want it to be a little tighter. Um, there we are. There we are. Nice. And so, I think there's a couple more videos from you over there. A few there. videos. I, I might have I done, done a few. A couple. Yeah, well, we're doing, we, we, we're kind of working with, uh, with them a bit, so um, yeah. we had a few sponsored stuff. We had a few stuff that we did for free, um, but I am, uh, yeah, I'm just a big fan of, uh, of this game. I want the prototype back just so I can play... Another solo game. Myself. Because you lost yours. Uh, Dogfight. I'm backing Dogfight um, to support the creator. I think the game is really cool. Uh, that's our video here at the top. I think the game's really cool. Um, I want to get to the table a few more times with four players. Uh, whether or not it stays mm -hmm. is sort of a question, but it has this idea of, so you're, you're going to be fighting down these two different lanes. Um, and what you're trying to do is you're, you're sitting across from your teammate and you're trying to play cards that Similar position... Similar to Redlands? Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's two, two versus two. It's okay. a team of two versus a team of two. You're sitting across from your, your, your teammate doing your best to play cards that reposition the airships or the airplanes around each other, like you're swarming in space. Mm. But the trick of it is, is it's complete silent. It's not silent play. It's complete, uh, like no communication play. You can't, uh, show someone a card. Mm. You can point, you can gesture, you could say, I need to fire at like fire at range three to the cannon yeah. left. But, but one person is the pilot and one person is the gunner. So you're trying to play cards that position you correctly while the gunner tries to play a sequence of cards that allow you to like get the sun in the right area and fire your shot, Interesting. taking out the opponent. It's got this simultaneous play yeah. uh, and this really interesting... You like simultaneous like, open, play. Like this really interesting open communication mechanic. Um, I it think doesn't it's sound neat. like something for me, but I'm glad it sounds good to you. Uh, what else do we have? That's, I think that's all, everything else is successful. Yeah. Like, historically, we've backed Lagrangia, Collab, Final, Final Girl, Girls, Marvel, Marvel Zombies. Zombies. Viscounts, Vi I didn't end up, uh, or, yeah, Vice Viscounts. Viscounts. I didn't end up getting anything. I just kind of, like, had a dollar in there. Okay. Um, Sky Terror Horde, Marvel Dice Thrones. You said you didn't get the Viscounts one. Whole collection of stuff. Well, we haven't played any of the things. Like, we can get our hands on them later, yeah. but we still have so much from the last Kickstarter that I backed all in that we just haven't played or tabled. We, we should play some games. We should. We, we, we do. We do actually play games, I promise. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of the new style of Shelf for Sell. We're, we might keep you up. Like, 
Let us know. Do you want to be updated every week on the one or two things that we're backing? Or would you rather see them all in like one slew at the end of the month yeah. when you a might not have an option to actually make changes on your own? Like, because if they see stuff that we've already backed and they might have wanted to back that it, then, at the moment. then they can't do it at yeah. that point. So let us know yeah, what your thoughts are every other week, every week, every month, every year, every lifetime. Yeah, and anything we have or haven't backed uh, is, is not a official judgment call on anything. Yeah. Sometimes I just haven't remembered. Sometimes I haven't put in the dollar. Sometimes I, uh, I don't know, just sometimes stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. I'm tired. <laughs> you didn't get much sleep. Three hours. Three and a half, because you kept snoozing the alarm. Any case, whatever the case, we don't end these videos like that. No, well, we do. No, we don't. What how we end them? We'll see you next Remember, week on Shelf for Sell. Less time watching, more time That's playing. That's also not this channel. This is Quack and Co. Nope. Not unless you search for it. It is a thing, though. Nope. It is, though. No. No, but it legitimately is a thing if they search for it. No, it's not a thing unless they search for it. Not unless they... But, <laughs> but it is, though. I, I mean, it's so hard to tell people that things are things. Why did you search for it, damn it? <laughs>